I literally haven't even told him anything, and he already knows that we're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is no, you gotta listen to me. Listen, okay, listen. Put your head down. Do you think he's pretty? No, put your head down. Head down. Do you think he's pretty enough, guys? All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go to, uh, where do you wanna go? What is that nose? Get your nose out of this shot, <laughs> you bum head. Let's get going. think bud should we go to Bruce Pitt yeah Bruce Pitt parking lot jacket seems to be pretty pretty all right not too many people here we get a lot of messages why I clip Frankie rather than put him in a crate and I always think that you know, if there was something bad to happen, like a car crash, I would hate have to try to pry open that crate in order to get him versus unclipping the leash from here or from the actual seatbelt buckle or just taking off his harness. There's three methods I can get him out. Like there's no perfect situation like this. It's just drive safe, keep them safe the best you can. Um, and this seems to work. And he seems to be calm, so we're gonna go in the park now. Yeah, give him a big kiss. Oh, wow. All right, mister. Boy. The last time I came here, I filmed about this being the most aggressive dog park in Ottawa. And I said a lot in that video, I talked a lot and there was a lot of good feedback on it, which I was honestly very surprised by. Um, and very thankful that people kind of like took the moment to listen and try to understand my point of view and what I was saying, which I'm super thankful for. Um, but we're back here again today. It's a Friday around 1 to 2 p.m. So tomorrow on the weekends around this time, there would be like 40 to 100 dogs here, but it seems to be a pretty quiet, quiet time, but we're still gonna hit the trails. The one thing I wanna talk about is a lot of people were talking about like, okay, well, why are you avoiding going into the mosh pit like you're just teaching your dog how to not interact with dogs your dog can hang out with other dogs like we go in large groups with all these other aussies they you can train your dog to hang out with other dogs without having to go into a mosh pit it's not a bad thing it's not a good thing it's whatever you want it to be i'm just keeping my dog safe because you don't know how well trained or how much time and effort somebody has put into training their dog you just got to ask yourself what's what is it worth the risk so today we're gonna to be talking about the check in look. And what this is, so I start walking this way, Frankie's that, that. He's like, okay, where's my guy going? You know, if he's playing with other dogs. See, he's constantly, if you're watching his eyes, he's constantly looking at me, seeing where I'm going and what I'm doing. See, that, that look is very, very important, especially when playing with other dogs. And if we can get another dog around here, I'll show you when he does it. But see, he's doing his own thing and then he looks, right? And obviously he's listening to me because I'm talking, but he does this a lot of the time. And this is the best thing that uh, he's ever done. Now, for those wondering why this is important, this is important because your dog is able to go out and they're always gonna check in with you. The reason why it's called the check in look is because even though they're doing something, even though they're having fun, they're like, wait a second, what's dad doing? What's Joey doing? What's my owner doing, okay? Do I need to follow a command? Like, am I doing everything okay? Is everything all right? Are they all right? There's a lot, there's a lot going on there, but it's just this, it's this really difficult thing for even people to do to, to check in with themselves, check in with the people who are around them. Like imagine you're at a party and you haven't talked to like the person who brought you there, the person that you brought who made you feel uncomfortable. It's like little things like that that go a long way and they keep us and our dogs safe, not just from parties, but from dog parts. Go say hi, go say hi, go. So now we'll, we'll see here, we'll see what he does. Watch, I'm gonna start walking this way. He checked in with me there. Oh, he sees another Aussie. So he checks in with me, he sees where I'm going. And look, so what that does, is just a check in look to be like, okay, are we going somewhere? Are we leaving? It also keeps your dog paying attention to you at the park and can keep them following you. I don't know what he thinks I'm doing, but let's go, bud. 
So a lot of you are probably wondering, how the heck do you get this going? It actually all starts at home. Everything that you need to be happening at the dog park all starts at home. And so the first thing is working on eye contact. Now I'm gonna try my best to film this on this angle. Okay, Franks, sit, good. Watch my hand and watch Frankie's eyes, okay? My hand's over here and what we want is him to look at us right here. <laughs> Say hi, go. It's a little hard to train this while at the dog park without treats, but what you can do is you can have treats in your hand at home and show the dog that you have treats and just stick your hand out. When you stick your hand out, wait for your dog to look you in the eyes. If they're constantly just looking at your hand, don't reward them. Once they look at your eyes, reward them. And if they're not looking at your eyes, you can always call their name and reward them, right? Whenever you see eye contact, boom, reward. And that's what we do here. And then once you have that, when you call your dog, Franks, He's looking me right in the eyes. He's not looking at my body. He's not looking at my hands. Okay, here's Frankie Pan. <laughs> He's looking right in my eyes, knowing where I'm going, looking at everything, everything. We can read people by their eyes so well. And with that being said, the next thing you need to work on is recall. And recall is a great, easy thing to do when they're starting out just as a pup and do it in your home, get them to sit, get them to stay, your basics, and simply call their name, get them to come, huge reward. And then bring them to an open field with your leash. Get them to do the same thing outside. We have a leash just in, in case and then go off leash and then go to the dog park and try it. And every single time you do it, reward, reward, reward. Whether that's praising them or with treats. Rewards are huge, it's how you communicate with your dog. And then once you have a pretty well-trained pup on your hands, then it's the next step, which is a little bit more intermediate and that's taking action at the dog park. Now this step is quite simple. It's to get them to go off on their own. It's not to move and see what they do. Now, he says there's a lot of smells at the dog park. There's great things and you can either stop. We can see him right there. He's waiting for me. And we're gonna see if he's gonna come back, <laughs> right? I don't even think he knows where I am. Hey, Franks. <laughs> you didn't know where I was, <laughs> but he's looking for me. We try to get in a better example here. So we're in a nice dog park. There's a lot of smells and everything, and we're just gonna stop. And I'm gonna start walking the other way. You see that? He's like, okay, whoa, we're going this way now. That's super important. I found this is like the, the final step that what really, really helped us. Like he's gonna see dogs over there and I'm gonna just start walking this way. And it's to see if your dog's gonna follow you, if they're gonna wander off on themselves, and if they're gonna join you and be like, okay, this is our little path. This is what we're doing. He's all the way over there. See that? Eye contact, boom. And he's right with me. And what I found with all of these combined with the, <laughs> the eye contact and the recall and the check-in training. Oh, there's a dog here. I found they really go well together. Sorry, I'm just watching. Oh, we're gonna get some dominance here. Let's go this way. Oh, good recall. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, that was good puppers, yeah. Uh, now, I'll be honest, Frankie was very, very good with all of this. He was really checking in before I even taught him how to check in. But with training eye contact, recall, and <laughs> seeing if they're gonna join your back when you just stop in the park randomly and wait, I found that those really combined the perfect check-in results. And whenever we're in the dog park and he's playing with dogs and everything like that, and I keep walking, he constantly comes. And it's just so nice that even at like a fenced in dog park when he's playing with other dogs and it seems like, okay, now I'm gonna have to yell the loudest to get him to listen. No, he takes his breaks and he comes in and he checks in on me, which is, it's just really nice. But now that we have all the training stuff out of the way, let's have some fun here.
Bet you didn't know we could do that. <laughs> One thing that I would like to point out is that this park is absolutely beautiful. Like, look at these trees. It's gorgeous here. Now, I got a lot of messages and comments on the last one about parks that you can pay and you have to, like, pass a test in order to, to get into the park and you, and you pay a monthly subscription to go to this park or you pay a weekend pass and it's, like, $30 for a weekend or something. And I'm just, I'm so intrigued to see what these parks have that these parks, the free parks don't, other than obviously only allowing select dogs in the past tests and everything. I'm, I'm just really intrigued about it. Is it worth the money? And is it worth to go through all of that? Because when you think about it, you know, it takes one bad interaction with your dog and someone else's dog for things to go really south. Now, is it worth it to go through all of that and pay all that money? I'm curious on what, what everyone's thoughts are. So hey, let's let's have a discussion in the comments below. Everyone, be nice. I'm not I'm not saying my side or anything. I'm very open to going to check one out and everything like that. But leave comments down below. Do you think it's worth it to pay for a subscription-based park that only is allow that only allows select dogs in so that every dog is monitored and all of that? But what do you say, bud? I think you had a good time, eh? Frankie was a little bit uh, a little bit sick. Two days ago, he actually, he, he threw up and um, could could have been something he ate, could have been anything. So we're just gonna take it easy. We we're here for about an hour and wow, beautiful with the sun. So now we're gonna head back. All right, let me hop back in here with you. Sit down, bud. The support on the channel has just been absolutely unreal and it's nothing, it's literally indescribable. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. Thank, Frankie's very thankful as well. It allows us to do a lot of really cool stuff and a lot of cool stuff is planned to do. But we're almost done dog miss, which is crazy. And then it's Christmas time. Yeah. So happy holidays to everybody and we'll see you guys next video. Do you have a kiss?